Welcome to Community Updates. I'm Victoria Strait. And I'm Emmanuel Ortiz. We wanted to thank all of you for the positive responses we've received about our newly formatted show. We love hearing your feedback. If you have any comments about our new show, let us know by emailing socTnews at gmail.com. You ready for the updates, Emmanuel? I am. Cool. Let's start with the state ones. So I'm not sure if you guys are going to like this update or not, but Massachusetts is going to start renumbering the highway exits, starting with Route 140 this October. MassDOT is converting the exits over to a mile post base numbering system because of the requirements from the Federal Highway Administration. This new system is apparently more navigation friendly, it makes it easier to report emergencies, and it creates a more unified numbering system for national highways, especially when you're crossing over state lines. You can learn more about this project by visiting newmassexits.com. There's still time to complete the 2020 census. Filling out the census helps determine how much federal funding the state will get. Uh, it also determines how many seats in Congress the state gets. So if you have yet to fill out the census, please visit 2020census.gov. Seven Bridge Riders Collaborative is holding a workshop on October 17th from 1030 to 1230 called From Page to Stage with fiction and drama author Leif Seligman. The workshop will help writers translate scenes from book to stage production and back. Registration is required and you can find the link on sevenbridge.org. From October 2nd to October 12th, their Memorial Library is holding their annual book sale. That's 10 days to fill a bag of reading material for the winter. The sale will be on the town green at the old Lancaster Town Hall. Masks are required and social distancing protocols are in place. Hours are Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., Sunday 12 p.m. to 4 p.m., and Monday to Friday 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. I'm definitely going to load up on some books. Mm. So on October 15th at 10.30, Conant Public Library will be hosting a Zoom Build It program where children four and up with the assistance of caregivers can participate in a STEM program building shapes and structures using mini marshmallows and toothpicks. Participants will need to provide their own materials and registration is required. You can register by calling the library at 978-422-6409. And on the 17th, VCA Sterling Animal Shelter will be holding their fall rabies clinic. Cat vaccines will be administered between 12.30 and 1.30, and dog vaccines will be administered between 1.30 and 3.30. The event will be held outside, and all towns are welcome. We now turn to Lex Thomas, our correspondent, who's going to be talking about early voting and Sterling. Thank you, Emmanuel. It's wonderful to be back, bringing important news to our communities. And today what we're going to be talking about is the voting process in Sterling. Now, in Lancaster, um, I will be in the next news cycle, which is two weeks from now, I will be interviewing the town clerk from Lancaster to get all the specifics about early voting and the process in Lancaster. So this today really pertains to Sterling. And this information comes from the Sterling town clerk Kathleen Farrell, and a number of important things that you need to know uh, is, of course, the 2020 general election will take place on Tuesday, November 3rd from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Houghton Elementary School at 32 Boutel Road, and this is where elections have taken place in Sterling for years, so nothing new there. Um, In addition, You can have a mail-in ballot this year, and ballot application requests and voted ballots can be mailed to uh, the town hall, uh, which is the Buttrick Municipal Building, the town clerk's office at 1 Park Street, Sterling, 01564. Or they can be deposited in the secure grade drop box in front of the Buttrick Municipal Building. And... Uh, Vote by mail ballots are all going to be distributed and mailed out in October. Now, in addition, there is early voting, which is in person, and this is going to be held at the Buttrick Municipal Building in room 112 
And so that's just adjacent to the town clerk's office. And this is going to take place for two weeks prior to the general election. Uh, so this is going to happen from October 17th through October 30th. And the hours for that are Monday through Thursday. You can do your early voting, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Friday, the hours are 7.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And on Saturday and Sunday, the hours are 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., 8 a.m. to noon. Now, um, as well, to check the status of your application or your ballot, uh, there have been a lot of people phoning into the town clerk's office. And while uh, Kathleen and her staff are always very happy to speak to people, uh, they're also extremely busy and are not able to... Uh, always answer uh, the phone right away. So Kathleen wanted us to know that um, you can also direct your questions to the town website, which is www.sterling-ma.gov. And there's a lot of general election information on the website, uh, including the hours, the things that I have, have just spoken about. And also, you will find on there the 2020 ballot questions. Now, I think that most of you have probably received this in the mail. And this comes from uh, the Secretary of the Commonwealth, um, William Galvin. And uh, so this is information from the state. And this gives you ballot questions and all of that kind of information that you're going to need at the polls. So, you know, when you are looking for information, there are a lot of sources, a lot of places to go. And in addition... Of course, the election process is always a very, very busy time and uh, for the town clerk's office. Um, and this year, as you can imagine, it's even more so because between the pandemic and just changes in the legislation and laws, which are really happening all the time. Um, and, and now Kathleen Farrell, the uh, Sterling Town uh, clerk, has assured us that everything is under control. But she also said that information and changes to information are coming in day by day. So she says it's almost it almost feels from their perspective like a bit of a moving target. So just staying on top of things uh, has been has been a, a, a full time job for Kathleen and her staff. And so she also depends largely on volunteers. So if you are able to volunteer uh, with the early voting process or anything to do uh, with uh, the election, you are welcome to and most strenuously encouraged to get in touch with Kathleen Farrell. And you can reach her at townclerk at sterling-ma.gov. So sterling ma. Dot gov uh, is uh, is where you will find her, and uh, she's going to be happy to uh, welcome anybody that wants to uh, participate in this process and uh, help out. But remember, so big dates are November third for the general election, seven a.m. to eight p.m. at Houghton Elementary School. That's at thirty two Butel Road. Ballot application requests and of, of, of ballots mailed in ballots can be either mailed to the town clerk's office, Buttrick Municipal Building, 1 Park Street, Sterling, Mass, uh, 01564, or can be deposited in the secure grade drop box in front of the Buttrick Building. Uh, vote by mail ballots are going to be mailed out in October and early voting October 17th through October 30th at the Buttrick Municipal Building. And you can find the hours for that reiterated on the town website. So it's an important year to get out and vote. Every election is an important election. And uh, this year is no different. So please get out there and vote. If you can help with the process at all, that's going to be most welcome. And turning it back to you, my friends now in the studio. 
Thanks so much, Lex. Uh, we're going to hear from her on the next episode of Community Updates about the early voting process in Lancaster. Lancaster is determining the process uh, at the October 5th Board of Selectmen meeting, so we won't find out until then. Today, on my book show, I'll be talking about Doomsday Clock. Doomsday Clock was a comic book limited series, now a two-part graphic novel published by DC Comics. It is written by Jeff Johns, with art by penciler Gary Frank and covers Brad Anderson. DC Comics has called this a direct sequel to Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, one of the most popular graphic novels of all time, and has influenced many writers since its release in the 1980s. Doomsday Clock explores the idea of symbols of hope and how different eras in history has changed our understanding of superheroes as modern mythology. Gary Frank does a great job emulating Dave Gibbons' work on Watchmen, and the art is fantastic in displaying many action-filled scenes and dramatic moments. Although popular heroes like Superman and Batman do make appearances, there are some discussions and scenes in the series that may, not, that may be too mature for younger audiences. If you enjoyed the Watchmen graphic novel or the 2019 HBO series that has recently won a few Emmys, you will not be disappointed. You can pick up Doomsday Clock, now available online and in your local bookstores. So this week for Town Tidbits, we thought it would be interesting to share the history of the Sterling 1835 Town Hall building. The town's been working really hard to get the upstairs renovated, so we sent Emmanuel over there the other day to get some video for us and figured he could give us some history on the building as well. The 1835 Town Hall was built by local architect and builder John M. Springer to replace the original Town Hall. The 1835 Town Hall became the center of the community, as well as many town fairs, dances, and theatrical performances in the upstairs auditorium. Until the early 1990s, the town offices were located in this building. In 2001, the 1835 Town Hall Committee was formed by the town to plan and coordinate maintenance and facilitate the use of the building. It is the goal and mission of the 1835 Town Hall Committee to continue to maintain and enhance the building while planning the restoration of original architectural details lost during previous renovations. The 1835 Town Hall Committee has worked diligently over the last several years to obtain funding from local voters and through state grants to complete renovation and maintenance projects on the historic building. And before we leave you for today, we want to let you know that on October 12th, SLCT will be starting our 20 Days of Halloween. Ooh. We'll be airing a different spooky movie every night at 9 p.m. And we'll have other Halloween-themed programs throughout the month. So you can view our schedule on our Facebook page, or you can visit our website at slctv.us. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't either. And that's all we have for this episode. See you next time on Community Updates.